Welcome aboard, and thanks for flying with ERA, the longest serving helicopter provider in the industry. With more than 70 years of experience, our first priority is safety. We appreciate your attention while we review and demonstrate the safety features of the AW109. For everyone's safety, you are required to follow all crew member instructions and comply with the posted, placarded, and lighted information signs. Federal regulations prohibit smoking, including e-cigarettes, or using smokeless tobacco on board any ERA aircraft. Hearing protection is required, and all electronic devices need to be placed in airplane mode or turned off prior to departure. ERA requires life vests on all overwater flights. To don a vest, begin by standing. Slip the vest around your shoulders and place your arms through the holes. Next, zip the vest up fully and fasten the buckle on the front. Adjust fit with the straps located on each side of the vest under your arms. If equipped, attach the leg straps to the buckles and adjust the straps so they are snug but comfortable. Roll up any excess leg strapping and secure it to the attached Velcro straps. To inflate your vest, pull down on either of the red beaded handles. Vests may also be inflated by blowing into the tubes located at shoulder level. Life vests vary in color and design. Please check with a crew member if you have any questions. Warning, do not inflate your vest while inside of the aircraft. After check-in is complete, a crew member, ground handler, or helicopter landing officer will assist as you board the helicopter. Always approach the aircraft from the side, remaining in clear view of the pilots, and maintaining a safe distance away from the tail rotor. Watch for a crew member's hand signals and follow their instructions before entering or exiting the rotor system. Be aware of the main and tail rotor clearances while walking up helideck stairs or when approaching and departing the aircraft on the uphill side of sloping terrain. Prior to boarding the aircraft, luggage and cargo is placed in the rear cargo compartment. Items greater than one meter in length must be carried level with the ground to avoid contact with the main rotor blades. To access the cargo compartment, depress the upper and lower latches. Place items neatly inside, cover them with the cargo net, and clip the net to the floor rings. Once the items in the net are secure, close and relatch the baggage door. For safety reasons, the cargo door must be verified closed and secured prior to flight. Be advised that the surrounding area near the cargo compartment may be very warm due to its close proximity to the engine exhaust. Generally, there are no assigned seats on this aircraft, but the pilot may ask you to sit in a specific seat. You will board the aircraft through the main cabin door. To open, pull out on the handle and slide the door gently to the rear. If seated in the cockpit section, open the door by pulling the handle outward. Be sure to maintain control of this door, especially during high wind conditions, and avoid interfering with the flight controls or aircraft avionics while seated. Regardless of your seat location, do not place items underneath the seats, and take care not to lean or rest your head against the cabin windows, as that may cause them to pop out. Before we taxi, your seatbelt must be securely fastened and remain on for the duration of the flight. There are two types of seatbelts on this aircraft, the three and four-point restraint system. Three-point systems are fastened by inserting the metal latch into the buckle, then adjusting the belt to fit low and tight across your waist. To release, simply lift the tab on the buckle. To fasten a four-point system, connect the lap belt and fit it low and tight across your waist with the release mechanism facing outward. Next, pull the shoulder straps over your chest, insert the metal tabs into the buckle, and lock into place. Then tighten the shoulder straps to remove excess play. To release, rotate the center of the buckle in either direction. Never remove your seatbelt until advised it is safe to do so. In the unlikely event of an emergency landing, be sure to follow all crew member instructions. When told to brace, prepare yourself by placing both feet flat on the floor and grasping the forward edge of the seat with your hands. If seated in the passenger compartment and facing forward, tuck your chin against your chest and bend at the waist as far forward as possible with your chest resting on the top of your legs. If your seat faces to the rear, press your head and upper torso firmly against the back of the seat. For those seated in the cockpit section, press your upper torso firmly against the back of the seat and tuck your chin to your chest. Main cabin doors are your primary means of exit and are opened by lifting up on the handle and pulling slightly outward. Rotate the handle to the open position, then gently slide the door to the rear. If the main cabin doors cannot be opened during an emergency, the windows will be used. To open, pull down on the red tab located at the top of the window and continue to pull the attached cord around the entire frame. 
Place both hands on any of the corners and press forcefully until the window falls away. If seated in the cockpit section, open the door by rotating the handle clockwise and pressing outward. If the door cannot be opened, locate the red pull handle and release the catch, then rotate the handle to jettison the door. All emergency exits are clearly marked. The aircraft is equipped with floats and life rafts, which the pilot activates in the event of a ditching. Rafts are deployed from the cockpit by lifting the red cover located on the lower, center console, then flipping the switch. Alternatively, rafts may be activated by using the red inflation switch located on the upper console panel. This is operated by removing the red cover and depressing the inflation button for three to five seconds or until the rafts begin to inflate. Doors should remain closed until the rafts are fully inflated. Do not inflate rafts unless instructed to do so by a crew member and only after the helicopter has landed on the water. For all emergency evacuations, ensure it is safe to exit the aircraft by verifying that all motion has stopped, your path is clear of fire or other hazards, and the rotor blades are no longer turning. For those passengers who have attended helicopter underwater egress training, remember to have a reference point and assist others if able. As a reminder, never inflate your vest inside the aircraft. There is a first aid kit mounted underneath the front row of seats in the main cabin and should be removed during an evacuation. Additionally, there is a fire extinguisher located on the right side of the pilot's seat in the cockpit. To operate the extinguisher, remove it from its mount and remember the acronym PASS. Pull the pin, aim the nozzle low, then squeeze the handle to release the agent and sweep side to side at the base of the fire. Do not activate a fire extinguisher unless instructed to do so by a crew member. Once you have arrived at your destination, you will be told when it is safe to remove your seatbelt. When exiting, follow all crew member or helicopter landing officer instructions and remain in clear view of the pilot. A crew member or HLO will retrieve your baggage. Thank you for listening. We'll be boarding the aircraft shortly. Now is a good time to secure or stow any loose items. Once on board, review the passenger safety briefing cards located throughout the aircraft. If at any time you have a safety concern or question, please feel free to speak with a crew member. In today's market, there is no substitute for professionalism. AERA's pilots, maintenance technicians, and ground support personnel are all dedicated to being the best in the business and remain committed to safety first and service excellence. On behalf of the entire AERA team, thank you for your attention. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight.